Most psychics, intelligence officers, and scientists agree. In terms of sheer accuracy of detail, the greatest remote viewer known to history was ex-police officer Pat Price. The precise detail that Price was able to pull from the conscious void was staggering, and he's been reported to have said this. The more attention given to hiding something, the more that thing shines in psychic space. Nothing seemed beyond his reach in either Soviet Russia or America. And many people believe it was this, his amazing ability to retrieve names and secrets and uncover clandestine activities that may have contributed to his mysterious and untimely death. What killed Pat Price? Might he have learned a secret so dangerous it ended his life? Let's explore consciousness. Before going further, it's important to set a precedent for just how accurate Price's remote viewing was. I'm going to speed through some examples that demonstrate the machine-like reliability of his extrasensory powers. Price had, for a number of years, helped the police locate missing people, resulting in saved lives and the passage of justice. His reputation grew, resulting in his teaming up with two scientists, physicist Russell Targ and parapsychologist Harl Puthoff. These scientists tested his abilities by giving him secret objects and locations to remote view and report on. Price would be given numerical coordinates from which he was to locate, describe or sketch whatever he was seeing. Just look at the accuracy here. It's phenomenal. Never before had such incredible psychic accuracy been so tested or documented. Most famously, when the CIA was testing remote viewing, Price was asked to locate and describe a lone wooden cabin sitting in the West Virginian countryside. But instead of seeing this, he reported a huge military structure, going into precise details about its size and shape. But his viewing didn't stop there. He reported names, the name of the base, key personnel, names of files, and even the purpose of the whole operation he was witnessing. A very far cry indeed for what was a lone log cabin. Price had gone fantastically wrong in his assessment of the coordinates he had been given, and he wasn't the only one. His respected colleague Ingo Swan had been equally wrong in his assessment. It made no sense. Perplexed at these reporting errors, a CIA scientist named Kit Green decided he had to figure this out. Driving out to the coordinates given, Green saw the cabin exactly as expected. However, on driving a little bit further down the road, he encountered a large military installation, closely matching Price's description. Reporting this up the chain, he quickly became engulfed in a national security investigation, as high-ranking NSA officers demanded to know why and how one of their most highly guarded intelligence bases and its intelligence files had been penetrated by the CIA. Feathers had to be unruffled. It was this ability to read secret files which made Price such a lethal operative, so they pointed his talents towards Soviet Russia, upon where many secret weapons and operations were soon to be identified. The CIA would go on to take this entire program under their wing, secretly funding it to the tune of millions of dollars for 20-odd something years. But for Price, this would be too late. He had no real protection against the dark world he was shining so intense a light upon. Reflecting on his mysterious death at a Las Vegas hotel room in 1975, Price's friend, Ingo Swan, reportedly expressed his regret that the studies they had both been involved with had not been taken underground sooner. In a rare interview with radio show host Art Bell, Swan went on to share what may have been Price's most incredible discovery of all. Have a listen to this. The CIA has only got volunteered to go public on something three times in their history. And um, the, the discrediting of remote viewing was one time, and it was completely unexpected at that time. Yeah, but they do everything for a reason. Yes, but you have to really to look into what those reasons might be, you know. And in my mind, anyway, one of those reasons was that they didn't want to have, ever have remote viewing connected with anything extraterrestrial, because... You put those two things together, and you have a developing situation <laughs> that uh, these chains of command don't exactly know how to manage from the get-go, okay? Are you telling me, then, that at some point in the program, and maybe you'd like to tell me at what point in the program, uh, the people involved became aware of more than just terrestrial information? Well, actually, I think it was Pat Price. You've heard of him, haven't you? I've heard the name. Yes, he was um, one of the early people that worked with Hal and sometimes with me. Um, I think it was him who first enunciated the location of a... <laughs> oh, uh, Although... Uh, I, uh, I put it, uh, a human extraterrestrial cooperation base, something like that. And uh, Oh, my. 
Oh, really? my, yes. And can you imagine the bells that started going off? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. A human extraterrestrial cooperation base. Yes. The location thereof. Mm-hmm. I told Pat Price, I, said, Gosh, I don't think you should tell anybody about this. But, do, you, do you know where I live? Pat, Pat Price was, yes, I know where you live. You Pat know where Price I live? Was stubborn, too, you know, and he went ahead and talked about those things. Uh, even unofficially, you know. And he had a good reputation, you know. He was a police officer. And, uh, would I would I regard that location as a neighbor? No. 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 <laughs> so, there you have it. Ingo Swan on the record with regards to what may have been the single most incredible, not to mention dangerous, discovery Pat Price may have ever made. All I know is that it's a mysterious world. To explore more mysteries of consciousness, watch this video here. Please like and subscribe for future updates. And thank you for watching.